Hi friends, my name is Kaylee and welcome to my little bookish corner of the internet. Today we are going to be talking all about early release copies. I never see anyone talk about getting ARCs and especially when you're starting out as a reviewer, it can be so intimidating. So I feel like I would be doing a disservice to the book community by not sharing what I've learned with you. I know you can't exactly read all the titles but these are just some of the books that have been sent to me this year. They're actually quite simple to get so let's get started. So let's start with the basics. What are ARCs? Simply put, an ARC or an advanced reader's copy is when a publisher, author, or company that collaborates with these entities give you access to a title before its traditional release date in exchange for an honest review. Depending on the situation, you may also be asked to publicize these on social media. One of the most common misconceptions that I myself believed when I started taking reviewing more seriously was that I needed to be an influencer with tens of thousands of followers before anyone would take me seriously. That is not true. That is a way, but not the only way. Before we start getting into the technicalities, it's important to know that there does need to be some place where you talk about books. Now, this can be a social media platform like BookTok, BookTube, or Bookstagram, but it can also be your own blog, Goodreads, or retail sites like Amazon. They respect that not everyone is comfortable talking to a camera or posting themselves online. Everyone involved in this process is just looking for the people that are going to best spread the word about these books. It doesn't necessarily have to be positive, but it does need to be reputable. There are three main types of arcs that you can receive. The first are audio arcs. I'm not too experienced with these. I don't usually listen to audiobooks, so I tend to just leave those opportunities for those that do. But in my experience, a lot of authors will include signups in their newsletters. I would say it's going to be best to go directly to the source and sign up through the author's website. Now, that's just for indie authors, so authors that are self-published through Amazon or other websites, authors that are published through traditional publishing houses like Penguin Random House, HarperCollins, You'll probably need to follow the same protocol that you do when you request physical arcs that we're going to talk about at the end of the video. The second is the most common, and that is an e-arc. This is going to be a digital copy of whatever book you're being given. I request all of my e-arcs through NetGalley and Valentine PR. They are my holy grail. To use NetGalley, you'll need to start by making an account. It's very simple. Just follow the prompts they give you. Then you can choose what genres interest you. You can also favorite publishers to keep their newest titles on your homepage. Each publisher will list their preferences. In most scenarios, they'll want you to link any review platform that you're actively posting on. Some publishers will specify certain engagement rates you need to meet, while others simply look to ensure that you've reviewed any previous titles you've received through NetGalley. On your profile, there is a feedback ratio. This is going to be calculated based on the number of titles you've reviewed out of the number of titles you've received. When I was starting, everyone told me to keep this number above 80%. One of my favorite parts about NetGalley is that if you have a Kindle, you can send any titles you get straight to your device. Don't worry if you don't, NetGalley also has an app that you can use to read on whatever device you may own. Even as someone with somewhat of a following on social media, you're probably looking at my YouTube following and questioning my judgment, but just trust me, my audience mainly exists on TikTok. The best advice I'm going to give you is to not take it personal. I overanalyze everything. I genuinely think I cried when I got denied for my first arc. There are hundreds of people requesting these same books as you. Some will have the same amount of experience where others will have more. It's just the name of the game. Be aware of the number of titles you're requesting. It's important that you are absolutely certain you are going to be able to read and review all of these titles in a timely manner, especially if their release dates are close to one another. It's almost a rite of passage to request too many titles when you're starting. There are hundreds of thousands of options. There are some titles that are open to the public that you can review to boost your engagement rate before you actually start requesting books. It's a whole new world, but just be wary. Valentine PR is another favorite of mine. A lot of indie authors, including Anna Huang, Lauren Asher, and Daphne Perry, use this company to give out ARCs. It is so simple, and I love that. It's one of the reasons I recommend it to so many people. I recommend signing up for their newsletter. They'll send out emails every week with new titles that are available to request. When you apply, it'll give you the opportunity to put in all the platforms you review on and then whether or not you've read a book by the author whose book you're requesting. If you have, they do ask for a review link, so just take that into consideration. Even when I was starting out with barely any reviews, I've only ever been denied for an arc through them once and it was a very popular author and release so it was to be expected. They are more than willing to take a chance on new reviewers. The only downside is they do tend to send you the title only a couple days in advance. The earliest I've ever gotten an arc through them was a week before the release date. But they do give you up until five days after the book's been released to submit your review. Lastly, we've got the most popular amongst reviewers, 
physical arts. These are books that get mailed to you that you get to keep. There are many different ways to go about getting these. The most simple I would say is to just email the publisher. You don't know if you don't ask. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. So whenever I'm doing this, I'll go to Goodreads and then go down to the section that says book details and information. Then beside expected publication, it'll tell you the publisher and the expected publication date. As you can tell, in this instance, we're going to request a copy of Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. So we can see that this is a title that is expected to come out June 7th of this year through Avon. Now it's important to note that publishers stopped taking requests for physical arcs around one month before the book's anticipated release date. So we're just going to say Avon is going to stop taking requests after May 7th. Now I'm going to search Avon Publicity Contact. It's going to take me to this page that lists all of HarperCollins imprints and their contact information. So we'll see that we are going to contact Kelly Rudolph. Now I always start on my email by briefly introducing myself and my platform. I make sure to emphasize my most important statistics like follower count, engagement rate, likes, video views, and unique profile views. Then you want to tell them why you want this book. You want to always make sure to include your shipping address in your email. Most publishers won't spend the time reaching back out for that information. They are going to be going through countless of these emails a day. So you want to make sure that all of your information is easy to find. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've requested a book and it just showed up at my door. The only arc that a publisher emailed back out about since I started doing this about a year ago was Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. They told me I was already on the list and when they were going to be sending it out. So if you've never reached out to any of these publishers or imprints before, I would also add on to your email asking them to include you in any influencer and PR lists. A lot of publishers at the end of the year, so during the fourth quarter, will put out a link usually to a Google form where you can input all of your information and they will consider you for their influencer list. So personally, I am a Berkeley Romance influencer and it was the best decision I ever made to apply. Every month we will get a link to a Google form. We'll get two categories where we get to choose any books we're interested in getting that month. We're guaranteed to get two books a month. Then they will randomly select people to get a surprise third book. I am manifesting I get this month's surprise book because it is Happy Place by Emily Henry and it is one of my favorite books of all time. I read an e-arc of it a couple of weeks ago and it became one of my holy grail book recs. I'm trusting the process. Last month's was Addicted for Now and the Addicted and Callie Sister series is another one of my holy grail book recs and it broke my heart that I didn't get a copy but it's not like I don't already own like five copies of that book so didn't break my heart too bad. What else can you do? Follow the publishers and authors on any and every platform. I've noticed that in my experience, most of them exist on Instagram. They are going to be your initial source where you go when you want information about giveaways, arcs, and upcoming releases. If you do post on social media, tag the publishers, tag the authors, tag any company you are aware is currently in possession of copies of whatever book you're requesting. You'd be surprised what they interact with. I've made posts with thousands of likes. None of them saw it. And if they did, they didn't interact. I've also made posts that have gotten maybe a couple hundred likes. And those will be the ones they engage with. When it comes to social media, a lot of it just boils down to the algorithm. You can't always beat it, but you can try. Something I wish I did sooner was creating a professional email and putting it in all of my bios. So up until a couple of weeks ago, I had my personal email linked in my link tree, but it just got overwhelming with separating what's important and what's not. So I had already made a professional email about a year ago and just never used it. Why? I'm not sure. It is going to be so much easier to start with that email than to transfer everything over later on because now I'm bouncing between the two. Well, that is it for today's video. If you've got any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below or DM me on Instagram. I would love to guide you on your journey. It's been the best experience of my life, I would say. I've met and interacted with so many amazing people and I understand what it's like starting out. There's a lot of people that just aren't willing to share information and I don't ever wanna be one of those people. I wish someone was there to guide me, so I'm gonna be there to guide you. I hope this saved a lot of time on your end. If you're looking for more of my content, I've linked all of my socials down below. I post almost daily on my book talk. It's been a little strange. I've been trying to enjoy this month a lot more since it is my birth month. 
but you can stay updated on my current reads over on Goodreads. If you want to read with me, I've got a book club over on Fable, and you should totally join. We're reading Seven Days in June. It's been on my TBR for ages. I am so excited to read and share that experience with everyone. Until next time, I love you all, and happy reading.